And here we are with a brand new episode of Short Story Long with Yay. Rosalind Kobar Rubius. There Is that you right? go. You said it right. I Yay. did it first try. Rosalind, um, thank you for doing this. No, thank you. For, it's an honor to be here. And before we start out, I actually have a surprise for you. I'm excited and nervous. <laughs> Because I know you just started vlogging on YouTube. Yeah. So the big vloggers on YouTube, like Tyler Oakley, et cetera, they open up gifts that people send to them. Yep. So I put together a thank you or listening package for you. Oh, I man. imagined if all of our your listeners got together and put this together for you. Oh, um, cool. Let me read this because I'll forget what I wanted to say. Damn it, this is cool. <laughs> it says, uh, Chris. AK drama. That's me. Typing this because my handwriting is horrible and I wanted you to be able to read it. I've been listening to your podcast and they have been beyond inspirational, learning new stories from people I've worked with, like Ski or Vice yep. and Leanne. And they've also um, inspired me to connect with people I've never met, like a Tom or Kevin yep. or Gerard Adams. I actually emailed these people because of you. So That's amazing. <laughs> I know you're the one that usually puts together packages for other people, but I wanted to create a thank you. We are listening package on behalf of myself and your other listeners. I imagine if I ever met any of them, I'm sure they would want to give you these items too to show appreciation, but most importantly, to make you laugh and reflect on how far you've come since podcast yep. number one, SSL. To be as busy you are as you are and still take the time to produce, market, and host this podcast shows a lot about you as a person. No matter what stage we're at in our careers, we're all still on this ongoing long journey finding our next paths. And the amount of free knowledge and inspiration you give in your podcast is helpful to everyone. The information and stories are priceless and something this generation can't learn in any textbook. I wish I had when I was younger. So speaking of, I can't wait to read your short story long book. It's coming. I think you got to put one together day. a book after this. So one now day. here are the items you have to open. Of course, every vlogger opens it. So you have to open them yep. on Tell cube. Me. These were inspired by uh, your past episodes. Yep. Which one do I go first? Um, you could start with the book. This one. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> I know you've been annoyed by a lot of Tony Robbins. Mm. Probably every guest No, I like it. I've <laughs> actually been opening up more to it. Right. So this is like perfect. So when I was 19, Tony Robbins inspired me to actually go full force and become a DJ. And at 37, this year, I went to my first Tony Robbins Unleashed Your Power Within. And it, I could say it changed my life both times. So Did you got to drink the Kool-Aid. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> I, this is a big... Shot of Kool Aid, and I will. I will. Even drink if you it. go to Business Mastery, because it's a little bit different than than Power Within, because it's more about business. Yep. But yeah, there's your Tony Robbins for you. Ah, oh, so good. So awaken the giant within. Yeah. How, when did this come out? It came out in '91. Wow. And I read it in probably 1999. And you said it changed your life. Changed my life. And going to the actual seminar changed your life also, huh? Yeah, at 37. Because, I want to go to one. I really do. Yeah. I think because we're at our point where, you know, and I see this with you, and I, I love this about your podcast, is you're so honest. Yeah. And you're like, okay, what's next? And there's a reason why, there's a purpose of why you're doing all this. Yep. And he kind of puts it all together, reminds you, and like, okay, what's next? Yeah. It's yeah. Grow, it, we're, before we might be chasing significance or, um, you know, sort of naming our, our, our passions, our goals. But as we get older, it's, it has to be focused on growth and contribution because yep. that's how we're going to get fulfilled. And that's dead on for where I'm at in my life because mm -hmm. I really am at this moment where, uh, and I've been talking to Kevin about it a lot because mm -hmm. Kevin is like super good at like life coaching and right. like he's incredible. Yeah. And um, to make a long story short, opposite of the podcast, I, the first half of my life, I would say that I worked out of, I had a purpose mm -hmm. and it was good and I really wanted to contribute. But it was heavily driven by wanting to shine, right? Yeah. It was little little brother syndrome, yeah. and then it was under Rob syndrome, and it mm -hmm. was and it was like it was ego driven, mm -hmm. right? And the problem with that that I'm uncovering is it's great to give you some motivation and some fire and some passion, but it's not sustainable, right? And you it it's so exhausting. At Tony said, success without fulfillment is is feels like failure. Yeah. And I think, yeah, that's I why I get I think that. It. So now I'm getting very clear on why I started, what actually motivates me and wakes me up in the morning mm -hmm. and whatever, and focusing on that from a positive place and sort of getting rid of any of the shortcomings or the um, mental barriers that mm -hmm. I had to just really offer just really contribute and yeah. really, yeah, I don't know. So you hit me at the yeah, perfect time. Yeah, that's why we're here. You hit me at the perfect time. <laughs> Good, uh, yay. Okay, that's one. That? Then you can open maybe the board. Okay. 
So if you didn't listen to uh, his uh, podcast yeah. when he's being interviewed by the Mama We Made It yep. podcast folks, uh, it's the me episode, which is my favorite. Yep. Because I was thinking that when I was listening to your podcast and I listened on SoundCloud, I was like, hey, well, he needs to do this on himself. And then when I researched back, I saw that you actually did it. Yes. Three hours long. Um, you mentioned a whiteboard in your room. It said 90% grind, 10% sleep. Yep. So I wrote that on the board as uh, if you were to take it with you. It's so good. Um, and another thing that happened, I, I, what I thought was great is I listened to the Big Black interview. And imagine you were that last, uh, and this is hard about, you have not a lot of girls on here, so we get a little bit emotional. <laughs> yes, yes, but I like that. But I need to get better at that. Big Black said, um, this is just all icing on the cake. Yeah. And I love that. And you were that last interview that he had to really signify, you know, he's been successful in his career. He made a difference. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to put that quote up there as so well. Good. Listen to the Big Black episode. It's also life changing. Yes. And the last thing, I know you have a hard time with meditating. I do too. Yeah. I thought it was crap for years. I'm on a three day streak. But what I loved about the podcast is what you speak and what Gary Vee speaks at is like the anxiety that comes with being an entrepreneur. Yeah. Nobody talks about that. Yeah. And you talked about it with Gerard. You talked about it with Tom was talking about it. I was like, I didn't know there was other people that walk into yeah. a boardroom and our hearts are beating. 100%. You know? And I want to try to be more honest about that. You yeah. Because once again, my earlier instinct was to act like you're uh, perfect and untouchable and yeah. whatever. And I think that there's... It's just way stronger to actually connect with people and be a human being yeah. instead of trying to be Superman. You know? Well, years at MySpace, and we'll get into that later, when I was an executive, there were a lot of board meetings where it was fight or flight, yeah. where I'd feel, I'd feel my heart beating and I would just leave the room. Yep. And um, I've been there. And learning to deal with that is, is you know, a, a step is through meditation. And Vishen, the creator, creator of uh, Mind Valley Academy, which is an online resource to all these great authors yeah. um, and mindfulness uh, teachers, he talks about a six phase meditation, mm -hmm. you know, starting with love and compassion. It's only 15, 20 minutes. I, can I do, do that. this every morning. Yeah, I can do it. I can <laughs> do it. Start with love and compassion. Okay, first you're thinking about yourself, then you're thinking about local and regionally, then you're thinking about the world. Do you have a list that you go through every day? Or yes. Is it sort of, does it uh, uh, change? It changes. Well, the, the love and compassion stays the same, is yep. because a lot of the times we deal with, our, with ourselves. Yes. We're so into ourselves. And we even think that our problems, people can see our problems, yeah. but they can't. I just want to reference, yeah. because I just read it yesterday, from, yeah. on the Tom podcast, he suggested to read This Is Water. Mm -hmm. uh, I forget the author's name now, um, but it's a it's like a commencement speech. Mm -hmm. It's a really short. This Is Water, okay. But it, you should read it. I'll send it to you. Uh, but it's dead on on that. It's about the way that we sort of naturally, our default setting of going through life is to think that we are the center of the universe. Yeah. And if somebody cuts us off in traffic, they are cutting us off, right? Exactly. You don't think about what maybe they're going through why or they're why late. they're upset mm -hmm. or why they're late or whatever. And so I'm big on connecting with that too. And then second is gratitude. Just thinking of three things, one career, one personal, um, and one maybe just the little things that you're grateful for. And yep. everybody's talked about that, obviously. The third, I think, was um, future forgiveness. Forgiveness. Yep. Yeah, a lot of the times we get stuck, and I have, you know, we've all dealt with business partners that weren't the greatest, sure or have. people in our lives that do us wrong. So just forgiving them in our head, I think, it yeah. helps yeah. A, a lot in this process of meditating because it feeds, it pushes out that negativity. Mm -hmm. um, the fourth thing, think, think is future dreaming, yep. right? Yep. And that's just future planning. It doesn't necessarily mean that you just having a plan ahead of you you know that short yeah. story long you want to turn into a book you want to turn it to a tv show whatever it is yeah just have that in your mind so you know where the end goal is but not necessarily that might even if you don't get there you'll know at least a destination yeah. point in your gps yeah of where you want to go yeah uh, my favorite part he talked about i think the next one is future a perfect uh, day perfect day yeah so this is what i do every every morning if mm -hmm. i can't get all of them <clears throat> I definitely do the gratitude and the perfect day is like if I had a perfect day start to finish yeah what would it be I'd wake up great hair day yeah. you know? <laughs> Same. I walk in Danny's in a good mood yeah. bought me food you know whatever it is down to the uh, tea of when you get back into bed yeah. so when you're closing your eyes you're like wow I actually predicted this perfect day yep. you know and yep. then I think the last two are uh, perfect day blessing a uh, blessing just yep. just there's a higher power. It doesn't yeah. matter what you believe in, but if you you gotta you know feel blessed every day. Like walking into this office, you know, and seeing you, you know, create the brand on you know yeah. on this network to what it is today is, yeah. is, is amazing. And sometimes we forget about those little blessings because we're like we look at the sales and we look at this or that and we're worried oh, yeah. about these little things. Yeah. And you remember when you just 
um, yeah. wanted, you were dreaming up these ideas. Yep. Well, that's a perfect time for the last oh, package. Man, this is incredible. <laughs> Jesus. So I'm Filipino. I know you've had a couple of Filipino guests down here, but this is what we do. We like to bring oh. items wherever we go. I need more Filipino friends. You do. You have. We have a, you have uh, a nephew that's half Filipino. How cool. <laughs> You got to show the camera. So the first one, yep. I wanted you to reflect back. This is from Mixed Tiles. I put these together. Um, see, well, now this is, I, again, I love the Rob and the Big Black episodes that you did. But yeah. imagine you at that age and what you were thinking. Especially just, this. Right? Yeah. And so, so for, if you didn't listen to the podcast, you started the line by creating drama beats. That's correct. Shirts on Fantasy Factory. Or was it Robin Big first? It was on uh, Fantasy Factory. It was so after Robin Big, I had a little bit of a fan base built up on mm -hmm. MySpace, which we'll get into. Yeah. And I started selling them from my MySpace account after Robin Big had ended, and then which led into Fantasy Factory. So Amazing. this is actually the press shoot for season one of Fantasy Factory. I wanted I, to get an actual shirt. I was looking on eBay, but I couldn't find it. But we found, you know, the the next. Oh, I, those perfect. would sell now. It's perfect. You got to bring they it back into production. Would. They probably would. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it's so cool. Okay. Um, and then we have... And the last one. They actually Houston. gave me two because one was centered. Okay. But I think it was meant to be one for the office and one for home. 100%. Again, I think you changed um, Big Black's life those last few weeks that he had. Just Thank recalling you. those memories. And then Kyrie Irving, your biggest guest thus uh, far. Yep. Gosh, you're so thoughtful. Over 100 hours that you've already put into this podcast over yep. a year. You know, just just want you to reflect back and... And think about this. We're, I'm, I'm pretty much at... 3 million downloads. Amazing. So that's like 5 million hours of people mm -hmm. listening to me talk mm -hmm. with my friends. And what the difference is is that you're you're our age. Yeah. So we're not being spoon-fed from like tw Tony Robbins who's been doing this for years. Yeah. Gary V kind of feels untouchable. Yep. We've seen you. You've lived not only the American dream, yep. but you lived the Cali dream. Yeah. <laughs> you know, coming to Cali, experiencing the dream. So we're taking advice and it's all so these experiences cool. It's so from cool to do that. And really what I try to do also where I think my place is um, differently than those guys is I really, I really want to learn and I want to teach by learning myself, Yeah, you know, and I don't feel comfortable, at least at this phase in my life, coming from a place of teaching mm -hmm. um, or coming from a place of acting like I know it all yeah. or, or anything like that. I don't feel comfortable saying that I could necessarily tell a kid how to succeed yeah. single handedly. But what I can do is I can learn um and show me learning mm -hmm. and you can learn with me and that's how i teach so yeah. that's the difference right? i think that's what i loved about your interviews is because you ask all the questions we want to ask yeah that's i you just know? hope I, I can't lose that <laughs> it's that's like vice wait what is a mixtape you know yes. it's just those little um, or break break down the real estate like we because you a lot of interviewers Number one, they they think the audience already knows all of this information, yep. but we don't. Even as entrepreneurs, we don't we don't know that the, the the gist of every industry. And secondly, um, I I never was really into podcasts. Yeah. The only reason I listened because I went on that Philippines trip with Joe Coy, Chanel, and oh, Leanne, yeah, and Cassie, yeah. and everybody. Yeah. So he had some of the guests on there. I was like, wow, pa podcasts are cool. Yeah. And then he you had him on your your show. Yeah, right after um, that. But the diff I think also the difference about your about short story long is that like you're not butting in to yeah. make humor out of it, which I think is great for other folks. But yeah. in this capacity, you're actually learning, and I think that we've learned a lot. Yeah, and that's my, like, number one, I'm so incredibly thankful that that is translating because mm -hmm. that is that was my goal from the beginning. It's still my goal today. I hope I don't ever lose that. And I, it's also me being selfish because mm -hmm. I want to know. Like, I really want to know. Mm -hmm. I Like, the same way if Chief, who connected us, yeah. would have said, hey, my friend Rosalind wants to go to lunch with you. Mm -hmm. I would have said, absolutely. Yeah. And I would have asked you the same questions mm -hmm. if you would let me. Yeah. The difference is it'd be a little awkward if I did it over lunch. Here, I have an excuse because it's right. for a podcast. Exactly. Right? And I've worked with Ski and I've worked with Vice all these years. And some of the stuff you've pulled out, yeah. I don't even know about these guys. Yeah. Um, speaking on Chief, this is the last thing we're going to do. But he was a rapper at one time. He sure was. So Chief is my marketing uh, person <laughs> for Young and Reckless who connected us. So he's wearing a suit here that I put him in on one of the first uh, MySpace mixtapes I put out. Oh, let me see it. It's pretty funny. Ah, oh, damn it. So I think you guys should come out of retirement, create a song together. Drama and Chief. Oh my God! Chief I drama. Agree. I agree. The drama <laughs> chief. Instead of chief, use the Chief Rock a beat and then call it Chief Rama. Ah, you're drama. so right. And I also purchased uh, items for my nieces, so thanks for the forty percent off on YoungReckless.com. Man, Plug. you are incredible. <laughs>
Jesus <laughs> Christ. I've never felt like, I haven't felt this like uh, cared about since, I don't know. Oh, maybe good. like a childhood Christmas. Good. I want you to feel appreciated. And that's how the YouTubers feel when they open up all these items that are so personal. So yeah. I wanted you to get that feeling. Well, let me tell you, I just learned a lesson that I will try to take with me for the rest of my life. And that is how thoughtful and meaningful it is to simply bring something to people or to give yeah. a gift or to say thank you or to, like yeah. that's incredible and it's so small but i there's really there there's a couple of days i was just trying to think of and i was reading the comments on all of your instagrams yeah. like okay this if we were to come together yeah. this is what we would so thank you for we're yeah, listening man, listeners package. thank you for inspiring <laughs> thank it. you for your inspiration for helping me put that together for to drama oh, how cool i'm so excited uh, and I, I promise you i will read that entire book uh next right after the one I finished, that one's up. Or you can read the summaries. Like you, you. I read Deep Work in a Day because of you. Yeah. Uh, the last podcast you mentioned, and I, I just uh, bought the summary from Amazon because I didn't have time. Yeah. He said there's a couple of people that said this, and yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I think in this generation, I get it. Oh, uh, it's dead on for this generation. I get it. And it has changed. Like I tried to when I, I posted some yesterday, um, like my top nine books, and yeah. I tried to only post ones that I actually made a difference in action from like so some mm -hmm. i will read and i'll be like oh that's a really good point but my mm -hmm. life won't actually change yeah so after i read that book it caused me to start um doing my calendar my calendar the way that i schedule it now is completely full at all times mm -hmm. even if it's a break it's mm -hmm. scheduled as a break yeah so it allows you when you're well the goal is when you're in the moment of handling your notes or responding to emails you are fully responding to emails and when yeah. you are taking a break you are fully taking a break and just allowing your brain to like do one thing at once mm -hmm. instead of 17. So, which was great because I, I, I came from a generation where we, where we really pushed MySpace. This was before Facebook, Instagram, yeah. Twitter, YouTube. And for a while, I had to disconnect myself from social media. I felt a little bit guilty, like yeah. pushing this into people's lives. Yeah. Of course, we changed lives in ways, but there were things that we did, I think, wrong. Yeah. Like, I think that we, in the beginning, we promoted the more friends you got. Yeah. You know, the hotter you are. Yeah. So we have, you know, Tila Tequila at the top of the charts, yep. etc. So then everybody's chasing this, you know, this, this, yeah, this social... Dopamine doses. Yeah, exactly. As they say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Our social fame in yeah. that sense. Um, but then it, it really helped the music industry, and that's what I was passionate about. But, but now I catch myself. Like, I'll be at dinner, and I'm taking a picture of my food. I'm like, wait, why am yeah. I doing this? Yeah. Is this gonna? Is this? Is this uh, filet mignon really gonna change lives? Yeah, it's so true. <laughs> I'll tell you, I've made it the last two weeks with only. Um, uh, most days, I have not checked Instagram. Uh, Instagram is my biggest. If I had a, mm -hmm. a week, an addiction, right? Yeah. It's Instagram. I don't really do Facebook or Twitter, but me too. Um, and so the last two weeks, I've only uh, m multiple days. I have not checked it at all. I've only posted and then got off. Mm -hmm. And. If I do check, I check at like 9 p.m. or on the drive home. Mm -hmm. I go through the whole day and then that's it, right? Yeah. And I just, I don't know. I, I got to say I do notice a difference. Yeah. Like I notice a difference. And one thing that I think people don't understand is if you're sitting, this kept happening to me, and this is my personal opinion. If I'm sitting in the office and maybe I have a gap in between emails or work to do and I'm on Instagram and I'm leaving comments and I'm liking and I'm interacting, it feels like you're working in a sense yeah right and so mm -hmm. when you're done then you go to email then you go take a phone call mm -hmm. then you go instagram again then you have a meeting then instagram instagram then you drive home and you're like oh my god my I'm day exhausted. was so booked <laughs> exactly. and if you really look at your day and take out the instagram right. your day wasn't that booked. or like i'll take a break in the middle of my day to look at my instagram thinking it's that important yeah. in that sense and, and where it got me is that okay a couple of weeks ago i went to the summer 16 tour yep. um i was standing side and I, I was filming drake for about 30 minutes i was excited because i've known drake ever since he was uploading free yeah. mixtapes on myspace and speaking of lrg he used to yep. be in the ads and he had his myspace url on his ads yeah. etc uh. so to see these kids and now to be in these stadiums it's just always an exciting experience so i was standing there for like 40 minutes I actually, he actually pointed to the camera a couple of times just because he was pointing to our area yeah and then the person next to me hit me he's like why are, why are you doing this yeah are you gonna watch this entire concert on your phone yep. tomorrow and i put it down and then after that i started like singing along having a good time yeah. and then i just looked into the crowd and i saw how many phones were up i'm like wow they, they'll never know that experience that we had just 
going to a concert and going yeah. to a concert. Yeah. Or going to social media just to check messages from people where you didn't constantly see a feed and feel mm -hmm. the need to constantly mm -hmm. update. But, you know, I loved all of you guys' MySpace stories. I know Chanel's story on, uh, on MySpace. Yeah. Dude, we amazing. found Chanel on MySpace. <laughs> exactly. You know that? I didn't know that until the Jokoi podcast. Yes. And I spent the week with her in the Philippines. And, that and I had no idea. that's 100% true. She came from because she would always hit me up because I was drama beats. Right. And she was a rapper. And yeah. so she would always hit me up to work together. And I'm like, this is crazy. Yeah. And one night we just invited her over to come hang out to see if she was as crazy as we thought she was. And she sure was. Yeah. And she just freestyled the whole night and yeah. is still that person today. Like we'll still rap yeah. on command. Yeah. Doesn't give a shit about anything, but it was 100% from her MySpace music page. Right. Which yeah, people don't know that. And if you, if, if you don't know that story, look it up. And she talks about it all the time, which I think is great. But yeah. her personality is just, one of a kind. One of a kind. Yeah. And for that to come together and to see her, you know, her, the, her career. Now she's on Love and Hip Hop. Love and Hip Hop. Yeah. And she's still that character. Yeah. We were in the Philippines and she's still that character. She was looking for a Taco Bell because yeah. she was hungover. Like, That's anywhere in the world. <laughs> anywhere in the world, Chanel West Coast, is, two in the morning, is looking for a Taco I Bell. I love her. I still have a Taco Bell gift card to give to her next time I see oh, her man. in my bag. She's going to love that. I'm going to run into her randomly. I'm going to say, she needs to be here. She does. I will. Okay. She hit me up the other day and she was like, well, how come you don't have enough girls on your show? And I'm like, okay, all right. She's like, why is Leanne on there first? Down. Yeah, yeah. She hates that. <laughs> but yeah, so um, that's a good lead in because I do get a decent amount. I don't get much criticism on the podcast, which I love and that's mm -hmm. great. One of the things though that I repetitive, repetitively get is that I don't have enough women on mm -hmm. the show. Mm -hmm. And I will say for the listeners, uh, the real reason why is because so far, all 62 episodes have been my close circle or mm -hmm. uh, friends of friends, right. right? Direct references. And what it made me realize more is that I'm just not friends with enough mm -hmm. hardworking, entrepreneurial, whatever mm -hmm. women, right? And so naturally, my little circle does that. So the whole point is to say, thank you for coming and doing this. And thanking, thank you for giving us a really valuable perspective that I need more of in my life. And that I think the listeners need more and yeah. people need to hear more. And I, th I think that's just in general. I think as women and yep. as entrepreneurs and even as, you know, Liz Hernandez was in here, I think we shy away from. You do, I think. You... I think men are yeah. more, um, call it ego or call it whatever, but like I think men have this urge more to be the man, mm -hmm. right? So they're easier to find because mm -hmm. you know who's yeah. running this, that, and that, where I don't feel like women have that like press. They only go do press if they kind of have to. Yeah, they're releasing a book or a single. Or, yeah, like or, you guys don't yeah. say like, okay, I need to go hire a PR lady now mm -hmm. and uh, and go make sure that everyone knows who I am. But what I was really excited about, honestly, was to come in here and just to give you this. So I, I, this, all the oh. rest of this is just icing on the cake. I'm so, I, I feel like- <laughs> Sharing my story is just another part of it. Oh, you killed it. Um, so let's get into it. Okay. Where are you from? I'm from, I was born in downtown LA. Wow. But my majority of my life, I grew up in the suburbs about uh, 40 minutes east of here. Yep. First Roland Heights and then Walnut, which sits between West Covina yep. and Diamond Bar, kind of towards by Orange County. Got it. But Walnut, California is one of the best cities in the world. Why? Hands down. Because it's it's a mix of all cultures, of all races, and everybody knows each other's family. It's really like three miles wide. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's Walnut High School and and two junior high schools, and, and, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty jealous of that. I really like the that area. I mean, I think growing up in Southern California in general, you get that. But especially the guests that I've had from anywhere in that area, like it's so diverse. Mm -hmm. And it just seems like you have so many different friends of different ethnicities and different yeah. races and different whatever. And like, I don't know, in Ohio, uh, and I'm not dissing Ohio. I get a lot of hate. For I that. love Ohio. I love Ohio. But you're <laughs> not. Um, it's here's the thing. There's not a lot of uh, diversity. Mm -hmm. And. So what it causes is yeah. not necessarily for people to be racist, but for people to almost uh, look at it as uh, like you don't know how to mm -hmm. uh, how to address it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or how to? Mm -hmm. And it's it's a weird. It's just sort of like ah, everyone's the same. Mm -hmm. We're all the same, and it's not this foreign or thing. Or there's and a it's thick not line this... between A and B. There's yeah. not really that in between. Yeah. Where when you come to Cali, you find that. And it, I went to Ohio. My ex boyfriend was from Columbus. Mm -hmm. um, Donato's pizza. Oh, I love. I hope Donato's you have a uh, banana peppers at Big Juicy Slices. Yeah. Do we? Not... No jalapenos only, right? Well, you gotta get Ooh, that yeah, banana peppers. That's some Ohio yep, <laughs> pizza it's so stuff. True. 
But um, I, I noticed that as well. And I, he said when he came here, he's like, I've never seen so many Asians in yeah. Yeah. my life. And they're the nicest people. And yeah. we don't realize that until we go to somewhere like Ohio where there's few of us. Yeah. Like, where's all that diversity? So yeah. I understand what you mean. But coming from Akron, did you ever watch more than a game? LeBron James's. If not, you got. Is that watch the documentary? That. Yeah. Yes, I did. I did it. From about high the whole group. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Yep, yeah, I did, and I loved it. <laughs> but I also had FOMO because I don't know if I've told this story or not on the podcast. But oh, you never went to a game. I. Oh, you not were in only, a fighting Irish. <laughs> uh, not only did I never go to a game, but I grew up uh, skateboarding every day, all day. Mm. And when you're growing up skateboarding, especially in Akron, Ohio, at the time, you are programmed to hate sports jocks. Mm. That's like. Yeah, right. like stupid corporate America, yeah. right? So my father is a photographer, like shoot senior pictures, sports, Amazing. yearbook, that sort of stuff. Um, he would always come to me and say, hey, Chris, there's this really, really <laughs> talented basketball player at St. V. <laughs> I think you should come to a game because he would go shoot the games. Mm. And I'd be like, Dad, why would I care yeah. about a high school basketball player? Yeah. I'm wearing a Pacers jersey. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Oh, man, it's so true. Um, and I was like, Dad, why? I don't understand why you keep saying this. So over and over, I wish you would go, I wish you would go. Then like literally one day, my friend had a party who went to St. V, who lived 100 feet from my house. And mm -hmm. my dad said, hey, LeBron's going over to Jessica's party. <laughs> you should probably stop in. And I'm right. like, Dad, enough with this basketball stuff. Like, I yeah. don't care about basketball. Anyway, all the way down to my father photographed LeBron, his wife, and their firstborn child Amazing. in his studio. He has the photo up in his studio. And he said, you should come in today. LeBron's coming in to shoot photos. And I said, Dad, enough of this basketball shit. Oh, and no. sure enough, now he's LeBron One James. One of the greatest players of all time. And I've never met him. And I didn't, like, it was just like, damn. Oh, Sometimes man. you got to listen to your dad. But you had Kyrie here. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I love Kyrie. He's my guy. But yeah. Yeah. So anyway. And to know, to have that Ohio, that's like us being in L.A. and, and saying somebody wants us to meet Kobe. And we're like, no, it's okay. Well, We're busy. If somebody said I you want to meet Kobe, I'd say <laughs> what time is good for him because I'll I'll be there 10 minutes later. But right. I didn't know. You didn't know he was LeBron, right? I, so I had no idea he was LeBron. I just thought he was a good high school basketball player until you want to know the moment was, I don't know if you remember all the controversy, but his mom got a Hummer. And it was like, who, where'd this come from, right? <laughs> right. And, um, and She's like, I bought it. Yeah. I just, I don't know. But um, Akron is so tiny that you yeah. would see the Hummer all the time mm. driving around. And I'd be like, oh, shit. Like something's happening here, right? Mm. Like you just knew something was special and then um obviously he ended up he i think he was on the cover of sports illustrated yeah. in high school right mm -hmm. and then he ended up becoming lebron and there i was sitting in akron and my potential best friend exactly went off to the, <laughs> you would have been godfather yeah it would have been me and lebron the two Uncle akron Chris. kids we could have been exactly. like building high schools and shit there it's rare that they're you know because i'm from walnut as well there's mm -hmm. nobody that's in entertainment from our city except maybe gerardo remember he made it rico suave He's yep. from Walnut. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, there's a there. There's very few, so you gotta connect with the people from your city. But you know what? Yeah, LeBron, you guys are gonna that? connect again. Yeah, it's gonna happen. Yeah, we're gonna find each other. I'm looking for you, Bron. <laughs> uh, no, but um, that that was my point. Is I just think that like not that it's some big. I think people adjust, and I think it's not that big of a deal. And I also think it's a lot different with social media. And I think it just kind of opens people's brains up yeah. a little bit. But that is one thing that I love about Southern California and people who were born and raised here is. Yeah you literally like don't even see people's race. Yeah. Like you're just friends with everyone. Yeah. And that's so cool. You walk in this office and that's what I love. It's like every color of the rainbow yeah. in this office. And yeah. That's what Young and Reckless is. So it sure cool. is. Um, and what about, did you have brothers and sisters? Or? I do. I had I had three sisters, um, oh, two older, yeah, and one younger. And I had a single parent mom, so she was raising four girls. Wow. So that made me the tomboy. Really? So I loved basketball. I loved um, music, specifically hip hop, and that was just my life. Yeah. In elementary school, I became a DJ in elementary school. How cool! Just was playing it, music. Was it tough, like as a young girl with all those girls and a single mom? Like, how did you? What did you do with your time? What? How did you, yeah. you discipline your? Mind you, I didn't know that I was a girl. I don't think I knew I was a girl until college. Yep. When my boyfriend told me, "Why don't you do <laughs> girl things?" <laughs> Because I was like break dancing and DJing and always around guys. I'm like, wait, what are what are girl things? Yeah. I had no idea. But I, if that's what it was like. Is like I was very introverted. Yeah. So I stayed in my room a lot. I had super outgoing, beautiful sisters, mm -hmm. cheerleaders, homecoming queens. Just annoying. Yeah. Because they're perfect. Uh, my mom was always all three at work. of them were like that. Uh, 
Yes. And well, you were the one. They were just super to break outgoing. Dance and <laughs> yeah. You're like, why, why am I not like you? <laughs> I was Charles Barkley. I love <laughs> Charles Barkley. I love Garfield. So I was very sarcastic. Yeah. And they didn't really understand why. They just thought I didn't like people. Yep. And it's when we're introverted, it's not that we don't like people. We just don't know how to properly interact in the same way, but we care just as much. True. Right? So I can write a long letter and tell you I love you, but it's hard for me to to say that. And so my mom was always working and that kind of left us all to manage each other. Yeah. So I was always playing video games, Zelda and like Contra and all of these things. And, you know, my sisters were probably doing makeup and girl you know, stuff. Girl stuff. Yeah, you. <laughs> I'm like, what? What are you guys doing? <laughs> Um, who was there like a was there like a boss or like a was there one that was the adult or yeah no? my, my oldest sister Riza is the adult and okay. and because she was the oldest she was the first person to leave as soon as she was 18 she was out the door yeah uh, Rachel was kind of the homecoming queen the cheerleader always like wanting to bring everybody together until now she's at she's the one that cooks the entire meals for the family calls everybody uh, on their birthdays etc and my little sister is kind of my mom's best friend so yeah. she was taking care of you know, whatever my mom needed, just going with her anywhere. There's a big picture frame, a family portrait, and it's. I always joke that it's only a picture of my sister Crystal and my mom. Yeah. <laughs> that's and how that's much the of family. a favorite she was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of us are there. So, funny. so it wasn't until I got older that I, st you don't realize, and maybe you feel this with your brother, because I, I love the stories about your brother as well. Yeah. You don't know what siblings are. You're Correct. like, you're, they're just in the house with you. You kind of have to deal with them. You have the same parents. Yeah. But as you get older, as your parents get older, you're like, wow, this is really cool to have this person yeah. that has the same exact memories that I do. Mm -hmm. My mom, she was a boss. She owned her own business, Farmers Insurance. Um, but I remember her, one of her first cars was a Mercedes. It was a two-seater. Mm -hmm. And there's five of us. So we'd all have to cram up in this two-seater. But mom was balling. So we're she like, just wanted okay. the like, baller car. <laughs> So she was like, you guys are going to have to deal with this. Until the day she has that car. Exactly. <laughs> she was like, you guys can walk. So uh, that, 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 that's what I really gravitated to music. I loved just, I wanted to be like Ananda Lewis yep. on MTV, all the VJs, Adam Curry. Like I really love VJs and, yeah. and music. And how cool is it to introduce uh, music videos and to just watch all these award shows when they were a big deal, like Janet Jackson performing at the Grammys. Yeah. So I... Uh, uh, I would try to talk to my friends in, in elementary about music, and it was just right over their head. They're like, can we play handball? Yeah. What the fuck are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, a tribe called Quest. And they're like, I don't know. Like, so, what the hell? <laughs> so I, I ran for president um, just because I know that we could create new programs in the school. Yeah. And I won, and I actually brought speakers in at lunch, and that was my first experience as a DJ. I would record songs on the radio like, in between when they do, they would do the countdown. Yeah. When the Hollywood Hamilton, whoever's the host, and then bring them and play them at lunch because they were clean versions automatically. And when someone would run up and say, I love that song or I like that song too, it just gave me that oh, that's cool. feeling of enjoyment. I was like, I want to do this for the rest of my life until reality sunk in. Oh, that's so cool. That was high school? <laughs> that was elementary school. Oh, man. High school, I did it too at Walnut High School. How did you win, uh, how'd you win president? Uh, that's that's I, 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 on the basis of that is I'm going to create new programs. It's going to bring us together. Yep. And uh, I'm going to introduce you to some hot new artists. Exactly. <laughs> so that's good. what my whole go goal in life was to was to promote uh, in, uh, positive or hot new artists, new music, and then just to travel the country covering music events. Oh, how I cool! Could, I could get do that. My life is complete. But how crazy to find that that young, like such a clear goal. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's a pretty clear goal in elementary school yeah I w it was either that or where i wanted to be like hannah storm on or um uh willow bay they yeah. were on this show called nba inside stuff with okay. ahmad rashad so it was like a, an, a late night basketball show got it and but i'm f i'm 4 11 on a good day right <laughs> <laughs> so the chances are i had to pick the other one i had to choose the music side yeah. <laughs> but in high school i continued it so in junior high school i was also the dj at lunch high school i started making real mixtapes when i would record mixes and um, bring them to my classmates and then I would play like underground hip-hop in our lunch time and they're like I just want to hear Britney Spears. What is this? Most like, deaf. No, this is Tribe Called Quest. <laughs> exactly. You don't know who Common is and Nas. Up, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and that was the thing. It's like I just love going to all the hip-hop clubs. We had places called like Unity and Lotus and Project Blowed where 
artists from the New York would come. So when Wu Tang came to town or Nas came to town, it was a big deal because there's only a few shows. Now it's saturated. Everyone's doing shows, oh, but there's yeah. only so many promoters, you know, and clubs that you could go to. And that was my weekends, which is yeah, and weekdays. Cool. I out. cool. I don't want to be like the the old guy saying I miss that, but that is so cool, and I don't yeah. think it'll ever be again. Because mm-hmm. now it's like who's on SoundCloud or who's mm-hmm. on Spotify or whatever. Right. I, I would I would equate it to the sol- selection generation. They're yeah. crazy in the SoundCloud generation. Yeah. Um, and they're gonna create something new once you know SoundCloud passes and and, and goes through its changes. But th- that's what it was. Is is really uh, and there was no way of us connecting other than meeting. In yeah, person. like the discovery was just such a bigger thing, you know. You literally had to hand somebody a yeah. CD and say, or you had to be to invited this. to this thing, and you had to go like, "Who's this new group?" Like a listening I mean? session was the coolest shit. Too. Yes, now listening parties are <laughs> cricket. Town. Right, like, we right. were just talking about that. I was talking about that with Chief the other day, like where the listening party is dead. It's an outdated, yeah. dead thing, and unfortunately, when you go to them now. It feels dead. It feels like yeah. somebody needs to do something here, yeah. right? Like there's, and I don't know what it is, and I'm not saying I have mm-hmm. the answers, but it's the epitome of like where that used to be a staple yeah. thing, right? Mm-hmm. You wouldn't miss that of your favorite group or whatever, but yeah. now you go to one, it's just kind of people awkwardly standing around at the local club and like, uh, here's my, my album's playing. Yeah, popping you know? bottles or whatever it yeah. is. Yeah, it's not really about the album anymore. No. <laughs> um, so where did that lead you in? What did, what did high school sort of look like as a whole? I mean, did you start to gain like, an identity and friends based on that, or were you still kind of an outcast a little bit? No, by by that time, um, I, I was in ASB again because again I wanted to be the person getting to play the music yeah. and do the dances and like play all this music that nobody else probably wanted to yeah. hear. Um, and and we had a group of girls called the Walnut Girls and mm-hmm. the, the Walnut Guys, and we would just travel like whenever there was a hip hop show, we'd see a flyer. They had record stores at that time, so like Fat Beats, et cetera, where the yeah. Beach Junkies were. We'd get flyers and then just go to every hip hop club possible. Yeah. I didn't know there was a purpose to it. I just enjoyed seeing the shows. I, I like learning the background of it, mm-hmm. the promoters, et cetera. Um, I never thought it could be a career. And um, I was also heavy into politics at the time. Really? And my mom wanted me to be a lawyer. She's from the Philippines, third world country. So yeah. when you come here, it's like, Dr. Lawyer. She's like, yeah, yeah. DJ, I so don't know. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you going to pay for this Mercedes <laughs> with exactly. a DJ? What part of the DJ thing pays <laughs> right. for one of these? <laughs> right. So then I went to um, UCI, studied political science. Um, but at the same time, I, I was still really heavily involved in, in hip hop and going to all of these events. And it's funny that you had DJ Vice on here because yeah. right before he started doing the clubs with AM, he was on the radio and he was doing these small clubs in Pasadena called The Dugout. Uh-huh. And we met, I think, from a mutual friend at one of these shows. And he's like, I can't get people to come to these parties. You know, I'm, I'm on the, you know, I'm, I'm on the radio, et cetera. Because he couldn't really promote them unless you pay radio time. Yeah. It's like, how do we get people there? So I started doing an email blast of all my friends, of all the Walmart girls. I was like, if you want to celebrate your birthday, for free, come to this party. Yeah. So each week, DJ Vice and I would pack out the dugout. And oh, um, cool. at first, we weren't making any money because uh, we would try to charge admission, but we would let all of our friends in for free. Mm-hmm. we make like 10 bucks. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Yeah. And then we thought of this like, genius idea, like let's talk to the bar and get a percentage of the bar because everybody's drinking. Yep. So we let everybody in for free, and then we'd make like 100 bucks. We're like, we're killing yeah, we're it. Rich. Yeah. <laughs> and so th- that was that. That got that opened my eyes into um, actually producing events. Oh, and I forgot to yeah. mention. So, when I was studying at UCI for a year, I was miserable. That's yeah. what I was going to ask. Yeah. Like when you're going to class, did you feel like this could maybe even be a career, or were you just absolutely miserable? Yeah, I was in class and I was reading the Source magazine. Yeah. <laughs> you know the Power Thirty. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I was like creating playlists, and I was memorizing books, but I felt like this is not what I really wanted to do. So yeah. that summer of 98, my first year of college, uh, I was watching MTV religiously, and mm-hmm. they had a VJ contest mm-hmm. to be the next <laughs> VJ. <laughs> so I drove out to Hollywood, California, mm-hmm. which is about you know an hour from Walnut when there's traffic, 30 minutes. Yeah. Stood in line for about three hours. I made it to like the, the, like the top 10, or forgot what, we were in a room and there's only 10 people. And the girl looks at me and she's like, how tall are you? And I said, 4'11 on a good day. Yeah. And is it a good day or is it a bad <laughs> and day? And she starts laughing. She's like, what are you going to do? Hold the microphone over your head? She's like, I'm sorry, honey. You'll never be on television. Holy she goes, but you have shit. a great personality. You should try radio. And I said, I was like, 
my dreams were crushed. I was like, why, they, why did I leave school to come here? I didn't tell anybody I was at this audition. I yeah. felt really embarrassed. And on the way back, you're stuck in like bumper to bumper traffic. I just, just kept repeating like, you'll never be on television, you should try radio. Until I heard the positive in what she was saying, she said, you should try radio. I said, I, I should try radio. How, how do I even get a radio show? Yeah. And we didn't really have the internet at that time. So I started researching like the closest um, radio station to our city was. And I found out uh, that there was a radio station at Mount Sac uh, Junior College, okay. a mile away from where my mom lived. Yep. So I took the summer off and I went into the radio station and there was uh, a broadcasting booth. There was like people making commercials. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. This is that's what I love is like when you're young <laughs> and you walk into that place and you're like, this is it. This is it. Like, what a dream. And so I, I, I said, you know, I really want a radio show. They're like, what do you want to do? I'm like, I want to play positive hip hop. None of that negative, you know, chain stuff. It's all about, you know, preaching yeah. peace, etc. Yeah. They said, okay, great. But you have to take broadcasting and production classes first. And so I enrolled into radio broadcasting 101 and production. And I loved like that first day in class and like we're going to teach you how radio got started yeah how to get a job in radio and how to produce a radio show I was like, this is college yep. did you quit the other the political science uh... yeah so that was the summer of and i was like i really love doing this for the first time in my life i feel you like i was it. passionate and i like wanted to go to class so i talked to my mom i was like you know i, I really don't really be a lawyer i can't even imagine myself yeah just dismissing myself from music and she said, you're going to go from a UC to a JC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she didn't like talk to me for a long time. She said, you know what, whatever you're going to do, number one, you got to pay for it yourself. Number two, you better succeed at it because you can't, there's no going back. Oh, man. You know, and, and she was, were you scared or were you like, really you know what, me. I will, I will succeed. I think it's a great, looking back, it's the greatest piece of advice then. Back then I was that teenager that was so pissed off. My mom doesn't understand yeah, my dream. Of course. <laughs> you yep. know, I'm like, and, um, but then it made me go full force. Yeah. That's when I started producing the show. And then going to all of these hip hop clubs made sense. Because mm -hmm. now I'm going backstage and talking to Wu Tang's manager to come and to tell a bully and a tribe called Quest, getting them on the radio show, whether it's a call in or the Black Eyed Peas. And so all of these underground hip hop artists were on this Mount Sac little <laughs> radio so station. Cool because of you. Yeah. And then eventually I transferred to Cal State Fullerton and it was the same thing. And then I learned about. I thought all of these artists were huge in my head. Uh -huh. And you know, working with a lot of artists, like they always need marketing support. And they're like, can you help us get a show? Can you help us do this? Yeah. And so that's when I met Vice. And then we started booking artists as well to perform at this hip hop club night that we had. And I was like, wow, this, there's actually another part to this that I didn't even know existed. I yep. thought I was just going to be playing their music. Yeah. But this is marketing. And unfortunately, my degree was radio television. Yeah. But I really learned... Um, how to market artists and how to, you know, when there's a song coming out, et cetera, why we should do certain things, email blasts. Yeah, I um, think that's a huge lesson. Like the, there was a point where I learned that with Young and Reckless too, where when you're sort of coming, when you're new to this stuff, mm -hmm. you just assume that everyone has it all figured out. They yeah. know exactly what they're doing. They are where they are because that's exactly where they plan to be. Mm -hmm. They know where they're going, blah, blah, blah. Don't mm -hmm. get in the way. Yeah. But as you get deeper into it and as you build a bigger plan or a bigger platform or whatever, mm -hmm. you realize that, most people don't know, have any idea what they're mm -hmm. doing and they're just looking for a good opportunity. So mm -hmm. if you get in and build a good opportunity, mm -hmm. you'll be shocked at the amount of people that will mm -hmm. actually work with you. Yeah. Because like from Young and Reckless perspective, now I always try my very best to be able to honestly sit with an artist that we want to work with and say, look, by working with us, mm -hmm. it will help you. Exactly. Right. We'll help your career. We're going to yeah. expose you to new eyeballs. We're going to show you in a different way. We're going to whatever. Mm -hmm. But I really believe 99% of the time that I'm actually helping their yeah. career trajectory. And you are. You, you've got, you guys, you're probably one of the best in us as far as the video content and for discovering new artists like they early on. Yeah. Um, that's my goal. I think that's what, what you touched on. I learned the truth about networking early on. And I really think this person that he owned a gym. And so I was really adamant. I printed my own flyers. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd go to Kinko's and, you know, I was like, don't worry, Vice, I got it. We made 100 <laughs> bucks. I'll use the 30 on flyers. <laughs> yeah. um, and then so I went to this gym and I, I brought my flyers to, to my friend that owned the gym. I said, I got this radio show and I can't wait to promote it to your gym members. Uh, all the, I know they listen to all these hip hop artists and they're going to love them. And he said, hold on. 
this was a networking meeting, right? Uh -huh. I said, yeah, because I, I learned the term networking in like these source <laughs> magazines. I was like, yeah, he goes, you don't understand what networking is. I was like, what do you mean? I'm asking for all these things I need. He said, exactly. He said, come back to me. And so I said, wow. So I went back. I was like, what does he mean? And it just means, it, like Stephen Covey said in Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, it's think win-win. Yeah. What's the benefit here? Yeah. So I came back to him. I said, look, we can um, promote. You can come on my radio show. You can talk about the gym. Yeah. You can offer a discount, uh, et cetera. And then after that, he's like, okay, you get it. And that changed my life moving forward. And yeah. I think from there... I understood networking and, and it always worked with artists too because they're like, you know, DJ Vice from Power 106? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, it's your friend's birthday. And then, you know, we, you know, we love celebrating our birthdays every month. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it. So good. <laughs> it's so cool, man. Yeah. It's such a good early lesson because I think like so many people, especially now, yeah. so many young people like just want, mm -hmm. like, give me this, give me this opportunity, give mm -hmm. me this. Like, I see the people that are in my DMs or in some of my yeah. comments or whatever, and it's like, give me this, yeah. give me your advice, give me your, give me a job, give me a blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And it's like, I'm sure that I don't, once again, I don't want to say like, oh, this generation, because I'm sure that everyone's felt that way about young people forever. But yeah. it is like, once it clicks in your brain, because I was the exact same way, once it clicks in your brain, that you go to someone with the value that you can give mm -hmm. them before you ask for yours mm -hmm. back now and you live your whole business life that way it's just a game changer yeah you know? he said he said to me he's like do you walk into a store take this sh take a shirt and walk out yeah it's like no he's like yeah it's the same thing you have to develop a social currency it's like yep. yeah yeah it's just like your brain explodes <laughs> like, i know the key to the universe so then i understood the key i was just like I was just volunteering my time and interning yeah. everywhere and working for artists of caliber and offering things. And I booked my first Fife of a Tribe Called Quest show in San Francisco just because I know that he wanted to book shows separate from Q-Tip. And just learning all these th things of just thinking help, help first. Yeah. And it's not, you're not always going to get the return. You know, yeah. people are going to forget. And you'll ask them to pay oh, forward. Yeah. But learning that really changed my career. And I, I think... Um, I think if anything that they can take, if anyone listening can take that from this podcast today, yeah, it will be very valuable in just developing that social social currency. Even as 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 kids or college students, that's like you're probably every brand wants to be cool in college. Yeah, you know, wants every artist wants to reach the college audience. Yeah. So if you have that market untapped, you're valuable to to a lot of folks. Yeah. And. And what what's hard is that people think that they, they should ask for other things, but it's like like Tom said, just volunteer your time and, yeah. and, and you'll get a lot in exchange. For it's that. so huge, and it doesn't make sense until it pays off. Yeah, because everyone has you know nobody wants to do the work for free, mm -hmm. and everyone thinks that they deserve more. And I think yeah. that like unfortunately, people either take your word for it or they don't, and it's just one of those things that once you learn it and you do it. And now the world starts to make sense and people yeah. come to you with opportunities. And then you're getting opportunities that you never thought yeah. were even possible. Right. And you're like, man, I can't believe people are taking me this serious. Yeah. And it's like, that's when it's all worth it. But you can't just walk into a room and say, take me serious. Oh, I, I forgot. That's a big part of my story. Yeah, is that I used it. to go to all these networking meetings like, oh, music industry, networking, mm -hmm. whatever it meant. I just wanted to meet anyone and <laughs> get involved. So Tess Taylor, she's the founder of the National Association of Record Industry Professionals. Mm -hmm. she forget, she'd put together these workshops and these panels just so people could network with each other and meet each other. Um, and I, I remember I went to one of her seminars and she, she said, oh, we're, I'm going to have an event next week, but I just don't know where I'm going to have it yet because I haven't booked a venue. And so I emailed her. I mm -hmm. said, look, so, you know, me and DJ Boss, we do this class. Is it your birthday, baby? Because <laughs> <laughs> look, we can get you in free, but you have to pay at the bar. I think she looked at it. She's like, no, it's not exactly a fit. But she's like, how old are you? And I said, like 20, 21. She goes, you know what? I want you to come work for me. The fact that you understood that and mm -hmm. you're offering something of value. Mm -hmm. And you said the same thing when you said, you know, Danny would say, you should put your podcast on Spotify, et cetera. Mm -hmm. like, just that piece of advice and then like offering something, it's so valuable to a lot of business owners because they're not approached that way. Yep. So she hired me right away. I became the director of marketing, helping her plan these events. So I was very fast. I would meet somebody, you're like, oh, you're a drummer? Okay, you should meet so-and-so. He's a producer. Yeah. Bam. Walk away. Bam, 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 bam. And so I was just known for connecting the dots. Yep. And my radio show was called Third Floor Radio because it was past, present, and future, and it was about connecting the dots. That's good. Whatever. Yeah. Um, and it got to a point that um, I, that's when I met the creators of uh, MySpace.com, Crystal mm -hmm. Wolf. They came to one of these 
networking panels. And he's really? like, how is this room full? And she said, she's my rock star right here. And he's like, well, I'm, I want to start this digital social platform for, for focused on artists because Friendster existed at the time. Got it. We only have about a million or two users on it now. We want to target artists. What are your marketing ideas? My boss stepped in. She's like, hold on. We'll, we'll plan a <laughs> set up meeting with you. <laughs> yeah. and we'll talk to you later. I think she wanted to kind of be in the mix with that. Yeah. But we had a follow-up meeting, and they were still renting. Um, they were, I didn't even know what a startup was. Yeah. So they were renting an office from you know their parent company, Intermix, in El Segundo. He's like, what are your ideas? I said, well, he's like, what are your ideas to create this uh, MySpace.com to reach artists? I was like, well, I had this little radio show. <laughs> and so, it was all about the radio floor, show. Yeah. I don't know. If it, wait, is it your birthday? <laughs> oh, yeah, it was, third, it was third floor radio, DJ Vice. And that was the thing. My, my goal was to just make the radio show as big as it was. I didn't know that MySpace.com was going to be where I was going to be for the next 10 years. Yeah. I worked for a dot-com before, and, and I, was, I was a radio programming DJ, so I'm like, okay, I'll be for, for a year and a half, and yeah. I'll fade away. But then he's like, what are your ideas? I was like, well, we'll um, you know, we should contact all the labels and the managers uh, and get, get artists involved, because if we get the artist, then we'll get their following. So yeah. this was before the word influencer was even developed. How huge. <laughs> I can't believe that was that early on in their strategy. I didn't realize that, like, Artists were that important to MySpace that early. That's it. Tom's an artist. Tom is a filmmaker, and he was in a band. Yep. So that was his whole idea. Is like, how can we make Friendster, you know, cooler? And it was being able to have this hub because websites were so expensive to make. Yeah. You know, and and, and to to get a record out, you had to get signed to a record label and have an A and R find oh, you. Yeah. You know, he's like that was the first yeah. one I remember. I remember when I was making beats, like my MySpace music page. Funny story is really a huge reason why my nickname is Drama mm -hmm. is because um, when I was younger, I listened to too much rap music <laughs> and I was a little bit obnoxious. Right. And, a lot of Jeezy. Uh, a lot of young Jeezy. And so what happened was when, uh, uh, once again, long story short, is when... Uh, Rob actually was the one who told me about MySpace. Yeah. He said, hey, there's this thing called MySpace. Yeah. I was a little kid. Rob spoke at one of our sales conferences, which Did is amazing. He? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, so I was a kid. I was probably 16 or 17. And I, he said, yeah, you know, and, and we were just talking one time. And he said, um, there's this thing called MySpace that everyone's mm -hmm. signing up for out here. You guys should do it. Mm -hmm. And so we would do anything Rob said. And so I signed up and my AOL instant messenger at the dr uh, address at the time was Cause and Drama. drama. And so when I made the account, I was, I was joking, but I, my name was Cause and Drama. It was MySpace.com slash Cause and Drama? Yes, and my actual name showed up. It didn't show up as Chris Path. It showed up as <laughs> Cause and Drama. Well, that was a big thing, too, because on Friendster, you couldn't use aliases, yeah. and they really wanted people to So I was big on the them. alias, right? <laughs> so now my whole life is an alias because yeah. of my MySpace name. So, I, so I'm Cause and Drama on there. Then I go, my dad is a photographer. So I'm like, uh, Dad, like we got to do a photo shoot. So I go to a photo shoot for my new MySpace page with all my jerseys on, my basketball jerseys, football jerseys, and backwards New Era hats and He's whatever. He's like, do you want LeBron in it? <laughs> yeah, like, I'm like, no, no get him out of here. I told you no basketball, <laughs> Dad. Anyway, so I, so my whole profile is these ridiculous photos of me in a I was studio. trying to find it, and that's uh, why probably because your URL. Did they ever change it to drama? I don't think Because I couldn't find so. oh, your I don't know. name. I, don't know. I wanted to print out. That's what I would do when artists would come into my office. Yep. I'd have a screen playing of all their old photos and they would get so embarrassed. Oh my God. When MySpace like <laughs> came back like two years ago, mm -hmm. I instantly went on. I was like, please don't <laughs> let this still be on there. So I went and it's all these photos. And then when I moved to LA, yeah. um, Rob took all of my MySpace pictures, uh -huh. printed them oh, and set them on the kitchen counter and told all of his friends, told everyone my cousin's coming. His name is Drama. Oh. He, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. He yeah. thinks he's a rapper and he this and he that. This is him. And it, that was not what I looked yeah. like on a day-to-day -day basis. And then when I got there, everyone's like, Drama, what up? So that was literally like it was That's because why. of my mindset. And I put that on your board, hashtag Cousin Drama. Yep. That's amazing. And yep. it's amazing that this name has stuck with you for so long. I know. <laughs> and now I can't. Like the other day I was talking to my friends and I'm like, I think I got to like ditch it. Like I got to go back to my real name. And they're like, you can't. Have you met DJ Drama? Yeah. He's oh, a friend of mine. Funny. Yeah. That's I mean, so relatively funny. friend. Yeah. Yeah. I love him. But it's funny because I saw him when I met him in an airport. And <laughs> not that I thought that he would have any issue with me or anything, yeah. but like obviously I would always get hit up um, 
from people saying, man, I can't believe you produced that Drake record. <laughs> and, and he would always get hit up like, man, I love Young and Reckless. Right. And so finally we connected and oh. it was this funny drama on drama moment. But um, oh, I but love yeah, it. he's great. I love You him. know, I met drama because uh, here's where Ski falls into place. So DJ Ski, when we first were starting out MySpace, he comes to, he had his agency. Mm -hmm. He had an idea. He's like, why don't you create like an official MySpace DJ program? Mm -hmm. So then we can get all the top tier DJs in the country talking about MySpace on the radio and yep. you wouldn't have to play any radio support. That's I, said, I said, oh, we'll just feature the DJs in their state and they would get thousands of followers and of course they would. Yep. So DJ Drama, Khaled, Vice, Felly Fell, so all crazy. of these DJs were like the official yeah. MySpace DJs that Ski and I curate. How nuts. <laughs> It's so nuts, too, to see how people evolve and, like, where they end up, you know? Yeah. Like, I always say, like, when I was doing, I obviously have countless stories, but especially when I was doing music production um, early on, like, the artist we were working with was yeah. literally Kendrick Lamar, yeah. Big Sean, right. Iggy Azalea, like, and now they're them. Right. And obviously there was a shit ton that never ended up being anyone, yeah. but it's just crazy to see when you're in this industry and working mm -hmm. with young, hardworking people, like... Mm -hmm. You're working with and the next never, with superstars and you don't never know. never know. I had a really good person, Earl Johnson, that would bring artists all the time into my office. But um, you would get those calls. Like Scooter would say, hey, I have this kid, Justin Bieber. You yeah. know, can you come by your office? I'm like, what, what about Asher Roth? Doesn't he have a record coming out? Can <laughs> yeah. we talk about him? I don't care about Crazy. this Bieber kid. Yeah. So Bieber would come to the office with his mom, not really knowing what he's doing there. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and then I started championing that. as like a lot of these new artists, we don't know. Yeah. You don't, you can't predict it, but you can kind of feel, you know, when you go to their shows. Like when I went to Drake's uh, show for the first time, I told my company, I said, this kid is getting millions of plays in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And can I shoot an interview? And they're like, no, we don't have any video budget. Yeah. Like, but, and he's the kid from Degrassi. Yeah. There's, he's not going to be serious. He's like, what is that? The, yeah. the equivalent of Nick Cannon or whatever they felt yeah, they were saying. And that, no, just Nick, he, he knows that they, we, they joke about that. But so I got a video camera myself. Mm -hmm. I set it up and I, uh, I didn't have an interview with Drake set up. I had an interview with Ryan Leslie who was performing that day. Yeah. And I, I said, hey, Drake, you know, I'm from MySpace. Can we do this interview? And he's like, oh, yeah, I, I love MySpace. And he brought me into the room. And I still have that video up on YouTube, and it's the worst interview probably ever, and it looks like shit. <laughs> yeah. But I don't want to take it down you because can't. it's that You moment. absolutely cannot take it but down. But he's like, yeah. I was, he, I, was like, I was like, so who's in your top eight? And he brought in Terry Kennedy, and he brought in Tyga, and he's like, Little Wayne, and all these folks. But those moments, it's just like, you, we didn't realize how, like, it, in Toronto, this was a big deal to them yeah. because being, like, having millions of followers in your local city meant you were the cream of the crop. And you could select what city you're in and yeah. be able to see, you know, who's the top in what area and charts, et cetera. It's just crazy. It's so nuts. I have so many of those th those same stories where, like, with the Kendricks, et cetera. Can you give me another good one? Um, well, that's, a, that's another... Uh, shoot, there's a couple. Well, Kendrick's manager, Dave, always remembers yeah. that Earl was always trying to set up a meeting with me because I was the head of our, our artist relations at one time. But he always had an artist. Mm -hmm. And you know, yep. <laughs> every artist wants to meet you. Yep. I was like, not not today, not today. And then eventually I, I heard, listened to his music. I was like, oh, this kid's good. Let's book him for this first live stream that I'm doing with What's Trending. But we, did a, we wound up doing a show for Budweiser in Detroit and we went to a dinner and they're all ordering like prime ribs and steaks, et cetera. Yeah. And at the end of the meal, Dave's like, yeah, I just want to see how much you love this. Because back in the day, you didn't care. <laughs> I'm like, no, that's, so that's not why. <laughs> and another story is like J. Cole came to the office and I was fighting. So I had the, the, the worst ex-boyfriends ever. But I was w fighting with my ex-boyfriend. I was walking around on the phone and I didn't realize how much time had passed. Yeah. But he was sitting outside my office for two hours. Jesus. And I never came. And when I got back, I was like, where is this? kid from North Carolina yeah. you want me to see? Yeah. He's like, he's gone. And so when I did the first interview with him, I was like, remember when you came to MySpace? He's like, yeah, you made me wait for two hours. Like, did you tell him you were fighting with your boyfriend? Shoot. Because <laughs> at least that's like relatable. At least you'd be like, yeah, I've been there. Shit. You know what I mean? Exactly. He's like, damn, no. That's funny. How crazy. So when you started, so you got into MySpace, you started building all these things and then like, did it feel like there was just this explosion? Yeah, because at 2004 is when I came on. So again, they were just a startup. And what was and your title again at like the height of it? At, at, at the height of it, it was, it was head of artist relations and integrated marketing. So you were in charge of everything. Uh, brands. So, so eventually, um, at, at the start of it was just how do we get the most 
people and artists on here. We had 126 registered hip hop artists, yeah. and it was the lowest on the totem pole. And they said, we know that hip hop can probably make a namesake here. So yeah. what are your ideas? And that's when I said, oh, well, we're having this uh, Apple song release party with the Black Eyed Peas. This should be a, mm -hmm. a MySpace party. So that was like the first MySpace artist party was yep. with, the, with the Peas. And then we just started doing more of those things with artists. And I, I, when, it, when I went to, I had this genius idea of going to all the labels and the managers. Yeah. And when I went to all of them, they said no. <laughs> and they're like, Why do you think? Just too new to them? They said there's no way that artists are going to want to be this close to their fans. They want to yeah. be mysterious. Yeah. And so, so, so much for that. Yeah, a lot of the major artists I couldn't get on. So I was really frustrated. And then they said, well, I'm going to call the third floor radio artists because I know them personally. Yeah. So that's when Chief comes into play. Yeah. And that's when, you know, the Far Side, um, De La Soul, Tribe comes on. Those were all the first MySpace artists um, on there. And because yeah. they were charting, then other artists, had legitimate artists on there. So it started growing. Yeah, within two so years, smart. we had two million. So it just, I think in t it, within that two years, it just blew up. It was crazy. And what was it like at the offices? Like, was it just hiring and hiring and bigger and bigger? And yeah. And I wish I knew back then, 24, number one, what, what equity was. Yeah. Because I never wanted a full-time job. Yep. I was like, I'm going to be this big DJ on the radio, so I don't really need this job at yeah. MySpace. Yeah. So I'm going to take a consulting fee. And so, Because they said, what do you want? I like, oh, I just want this consulting fee. I think it was like seven fifty a week. And they're like, okay. Yeah, deal. <laughs> Hurry up and sign this real they're quick. They're like, I didn't know about benefits, equity. I didn't know what startups was, et cetera, until later. So then... Um, so at the office, I was never in the office mm -hmm. because I would uh, all day be driving around town meeting with artists and labels and then going to the clubs, going to the DJs personally, like, hey, Felly Fell, there's this MySpace, I'm going to create this page for you, blah, blah, blah. Yep. And then um, they started hiring people in different parts of marketing who would question what I was doing because they didn't understand. Yeah, They're like, you're never in the office, but you're getting this... Seven fifty a week yeah, yeah. <laughs> consulting fee. Yeah. And uh, what are you doing? And so, okay, so I just realized I had to start bringing people in. Mm -hmm. So then, um, you know, I would get introduced to artists. Little John would come in like every week. Most Def, Ice Cube came in. So once they actually saw the artist in there, like that's what she's doing. Yep. And it wasn't the traditional. I never had a marketing degree. Yep. You know, I didn't go to an Ivy League school, and a lot of that was insecurity when I was younger. I was like, I don't really know marketing per se is like print and traditional media but i do know how to get somebody into a club yeah. and it's kind of the same strategy it's the exact same strategy <laughs> and usually yeah. you're better when you're naturally better and don't have the ivy league degree and that's the thing i would come out with I'm like oh, there's this mixtape and it says third floor radio on there as well and they're like who are these artists yeah and they're like where's jay-z where is you know kanye etc like, yeah. well they don't need my space yeah um, and so I was like, fudge, I had to go back to the drawing table. How do I get to these artists? So then I would see that Ryan Leslie was producing Diddy and he, you know, he would just released Cassie's record. So he was, so I got him featured and we would feature the Cassie record, which became everybody's profile song. Yeah. So then he, while he was in there, of course, Diddy was looking over his shoulder, like, what is that? Yeah. So then Diddy created Profile, and he started making these vlogs, like in the, when he was delivering his baby, mm -hmm. when he was in the bathroom. And then that's and then I talked to Kanye's girlfriend and then and then we created a profile for Kanye. He's like, I want the login for that. So that's how we got Kanye. Like there were just random marketing strategies yeah. that I wish we could put into a textbook, but there wasn't a real way to, yeah, to define can. that. But but now it exists because now there's influencer marketing and it's the same thing, but we didn't know what to call it back then. And the people with marketing degrees that were in the office were like, You have to show us yeah. <laughs> what you're doing. Yeah. But I will say, like, everyone's still, in my opinion, everyone is still chasing. Like, everyone's still um, playing catch up, you know, mm -hmm. like a lot of brands. And I think that obviously there's probably a billion new apps that are trying to be created that's trying to be the next Instagram. And, like, everyone is yeah. chasing. I think that the part of it that you can't teach is the the hunger of it. Yeah. Right? And they're like, okay, if you know that you want to get Diddy, but you can't call him directly and he doesn't care enough to say sign up now, how do you yeah. get him? And I yeah. think that like that hustle is what you can attempt to teach. You can't yeah. teach it, but it's the mentality. And then we start, then we were the biggest, we we're the number one website in the world, which is crazy because I think that's how the Snapchat kids or the Instagram kids feel now. When you're in it, you don't know how big it is yep. because you're still struggling every day. You're seeing the numbers were like, 
okay, 200 million users, but oh, all right, we're charging a million dollars for our homepage ad. Like That's crazy how that's higher. everything. <laughs> like I'll talk to people who yeah. literally have like $5 million companies or have been a part of $5 billion companies. And like when you're in it, you never realize how big it is. Yeah. Like you just, you can't, you don't have that perspective. Mm -hmm. So all you can do is work the best and the smartest that you know how and hope yeah. that it's resonating. Yeah. That's, it's just a, such a universal thing. And that's what happened too. the guy that created secret shows. Cause we would do these pop-up shows across mm -hmm. the country. I remember that. And, um, he said, why don't the hip hop guys want to, want to do these things? You know, he, he was challenging me. He's like, he's like, none of these guys even understand the value of it. Mm -hmm. So ice cube was the first person to do this, this, this show. Um, and then I started bringing other artists to him, like, do you want to do shows with this person, this person? And he's like, no, I don't know who these artists are. Yeah. So I created my own program called The Release, where I piggybacked off the top eight. Uh -huh. So it, when it came for uh, T.I.'s album to release, it's like, okay, who's in your top eight? It's like, well, right now, uh, Rihanna and Kanye. Yeah. I was like, well, try, get them to come out to the show. And so right before he went to jail... Uh, I had to write a letter so he could stay out <laughs> past a you certain did. time. Yeah, CNN came, but we did this big show at the Key Club, which is One Oak now. And then uh, Kanye and Rihanna came out, uh, and we had this amazing show. He premiered Heartless, which was off 808, yeah. and they were on Live Your Life. And that became like, okay, who's going to... Who's going to top who? So now Busta Rhymes had a show. So Diddy and Khaled and yeah. all these folks came in. And it became a competition of who your friends are, who's your top eight, who's going to show up. I did Lil Wayne and and, and um, Mike Jones in New Orleans. Like It was just, it was all a competition of, of yeah. whose friends are cooler. And yeah. Especially if you if you could take one of your top eight that wasn't really known and make them huge. Yeah. That was a success. Like Wayne taking Drake or Drake taking Tyga. It's just that it, like just by being affiliated in that way yeah. versus a picture was was huge. And God, how cool. How long were you there? 10 years. So 2004 to the end of 2013. So maybe like nine nine years and seven months. Um, That's insane. Yeah, and it's it started to be where you're you're the uh, you're the senior in college that hasn't chose a major yet. Yeah, <laughs> you're yeah. looking around like, how come I'm the only one here? Yeah. And I was so dedicated because I help. It's like raising a baby. Mm -hmm. It's and like I remember, not wanting to let your kid go to college. Yeah. You know, like, no, no, just stay home a couple more years. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, and I met with a lot of the companies, like a Pandora, Twitter, a Spotify, et cetera, um, SoundCloud even, and they're like, oh, I was like, these are all just startups to mm -hmm, me. You know, mm -hmm. they're never going to be as big as MySpace. Yeah. But it, but it came to that point um, where it was like, okay, oh, I, you know, Facebook came in and the problem that we had was that we weren't evolving our product fast enough. Yeah. We were just thinking of how to monetize yep. because it was recently sold. And so my job changed from bringing all the artists in is like, how can we charge Coca-Cola a million dollars to do this? Yeah. How can you get Miguel to do the show for Trojan and get 500,000 versus to me, it was just cool because we were promoting new music and promoting new artists. And now it turned in kind of like a money game. Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm thankful for that because I learned the integrated marketing game and, yeah. and learning how to connect brands and, and artists as, as well. Yep. So did you? So it sold and then started having trouble. It sold and no, they were they were. It, but was, meaning he sold it before, right? He sold it before and then and then the ad stuff became a big deal and yeah. that's sort of where the evolution slowed down. And I didn't realize he. I don't know why I didn't realize he sold it. Yeah, and he was still there. Tom and Chris, and uh, there's five founders. They were still there for mm -hmm. a while, um, and I really didn't know the 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 logistics of of everything. Yep. You know, and uh, I didn't know how it worked, but I knew that certain people were now gone and they weren't there anymore. Yep. yep but yep. the focus was, especially being bought by Fox, is is definitely because we opened up fast. Twenty two countries. I had to go to London Jeez. to launch MySpace London, MySpace Mexico to uh, uh, MySpace Mexico because we they had these Fox offices that we could just instantly create MySpace offices. Yep, yep. And so when Anthony was on the show, it's funny because that's when he first started managing Nas. Yep. And I remember when this whole thing came out and Nas was everywhere saying that he hated Fox. Really? You know, because he got into that fight yep. <laughs> with him. And we had a show at the Roxy with Nas. And I say, I say to him, like, I'm like, you know that MySpace is owned by Fox, right? And you're playing this show. Uh -huh. And he's like, well, I don't rock with Fox, but... You know, MySpace is cool. Yeah. And I was like, where's your manager, Anthony, that I've been talking to? He's like, he's right here. And I'm like, this guy. <laughs> That's amazing. How old was he, like 19? He was like so young. I'm like, 
no way. I'm like, you're the Anthony I've been talking to? He's like, yeah. What? <laughs> oh, he's so good. And That's his voice amazing. is amazing on radio, too. So he should be, or podcasting. Yeah, he's he should good. Be a rapper he's real good. He's but good. a lot of those 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 crazy stories was was, was was during the Fox regime. As I would say, when things changed, because everybody was in all different directions, and we had so many mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. There was about fifteen people when I was there in the beginning in two thousand four. Now it was a thousand. Yeah. So it, I can imagine that would be impossible. Mm-mm. So where did you go when you left? I so I, I met with different companies, and uh, I had this feeling. This is being older and being like around you know my my mid thirties. And when I was in these meetings with these, all these music companies, it just started sounding redundant. And I forgot to tell you, like, t- towards my latter years of MySpace, there's a lot of leadership challenges. Mm-hmm. And the challenge with my job is, was I never wanted to be, like, my goal in life wasn't to be president of some corporation. Yeah, yeah, Remember, yeah. I just wanted to be a DJ. Yeah. <laughs> and it changed during the years, and I changed lives, and I finally, I read The Secret, and I asked for a salary, and et cetera, and I started figuring this stuff out. Yeah. But then it got to a point where there was a lot, they were hiring new people, and we got purchased again. You know, the, Justin Timberlake came on in as investor, and yeah. there was a lot of disagreements in leadership. Mm-hmm. And there was like a Game of Thrones type of thing, like yeah. don't talk to this person, do this, don't do this behind your back. Yeah. And it started to feel like this is not what it, this is not what it was, it's mm-hmm. not what we created back in the day. So I started getting those feelings. But, um, and I started getting job offers from other companies. Mm-hmm. Like, again, SoundCloud was launching and et cetera. But I never wanted to leave because I didn't want to disappoint my team. And I felt like I was leaving my child yeah. if I left. Yeah. Until Kenna, who, who's um, Justin Timberlake's best friend, was in the office. And he's, and I was crying because I was like, I literally I got a big leave. offer yeah. <laughs> to be vice president of this other big music company. He's like, you know you don't own this, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? It's my baby. <laughs> He's like, you don't own this. Yeah. He's like, why are you crying? I'm like, I don't own this. And and that's when it dawned on me. And then when I went into all of those meetings, they were like, yeah, then you, you, you can do what you did at MySpace, bring in all these artists to, to get to use this app or to use a streaming service. And it felt like, oh, that's what they want me here for? Yeah. Yeah, you know, and 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 bringing in the dollars, and I brought in over fifteen fifty million dollars of programs into MySpace. So it was all about a money making machine, but it didn't feel like that original reason yep. why I wanted to come in, and I didn't own it, and I didn't realize there was a big payout, you know, to owners when that yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So after that, I I was like, you know what, I'm gonna start my own company. And that's what I did. I started a, a talent booking and production company, and I worked on, you know, Steve's uh, Fuse TV, helping mm-hmm. book artists for that. And uh, I also uh, connected, did a couple of brand deals. But what I learned early on when you start your own company is that no one's fast to pay you. Yeah. So I told God, I said, you know what? If I create this company, worst case scenario, it failed. I'll just go back to a salary yeah. job. Yeah. And I remember I was waiting for like a ten thousand dollar check, and I literally had like five hundred dollars after paying everybody like uh, in my business account. And then I got a call from what, somebody that worked with, with me at MySpace, and said there this there's this new company they want to create a video platform, and they're just working on funding right now, and they're looking for a CEO, which I think you would be perfect for. Uh-huh. And coincidentally, I had just done an, an interview. One of the first interviews I had done for the first time, like in the situation where I'm being interviewed rather yeah. than me doing the interview, yeah. was for Lift Off Pictures. Okay. And so when they, as I said, I don't want to do the interview. No one cares about my story. I'm just a kid from Walnut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? uh-huh. So I did the interview, and um, for the so I showed it to a couple people. I showed it to my mom. She's like, oh that's what you do. Mm-hmm. And I showed it to a couple of people that I wanted to work with and they're like, yeah, we, we would definitely want to work with you. And it dawned on me, I was like, what if everybody had a video resume? Yeah. You know, what if, you know, all these people that were on your podcast, what if you can watch a three minute video before you even meet them or go into a meeting? How fast could you connect when you first sit down? Yeah, yeah. And so then that's the idea of when my Divio uh, came to me, just creating a video resume platform. Uh, uh, specifically for artists, or I wanted it to be for everybody. And then, coincidentally, my part the the guy called me and said they were looking for a CEO for this new video platform. Uh-huh. And but it was go- geared more towards musicians and artists and being a contest platform. Yeah. So I met with him, and then we came up with the idea of my Divio Center for my discovery video uh-huh. and being that platform. And it started out as just musicians and artists, but then we now spawned into being. For everybody, yeah. And so, working with brands to find the right influencers for their campaigns, helping uh, 
small businesses, when new clients, et cetera, to sharing a video profile. Yeah. Because. So did you bail on the other thing on the booking? Yeah. You just bailed out. But then, then it all, it all, cause, cause it, what came into handy, um, then, then he's like, okay, this is a salary. This is what you get. This is that. But I was still doing what I loved. Oh, I yeah. forgot to, to tell you once I became, I was like, I want to do this with you. Yeah. I actually quit three hours into signing the deal. <laughs> He's like, why are you quitting? I was like, because... You quit the new thing? I quit the new thing. I said, because I don't own it. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be CEO or CMO, but I don't own this. He's yeah. like, is that what you want? Then, then yeah, you are gonna you can have equity. He's like, oh, you just have to ask for it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, that's so good. And then it that's all means That's so good. Sense. It's like a cartoon lesson or something. Yes. Like not to, I, not to downplay the lesson. It's so important. But what I mean is like, it's like, oh, yeah, but I don't own it. I'm out. But yeah. I don't own it. I'm out. And, like, you don't realize how valuable you yeah. are sometimes. That all you have to do is say, hey, can I own it? And they're like, no, Even yeah, on MySpace, here's, here's like, doing equity. all the sales, I was, like, I was, I was producing the shows. I was talking to the brands. I was going to the brand meetings, solidifying it, getting the artists to play. A lot of these times they were doing these shows for free. Yeah. So T.I. was doing the show with AT&T for free. And Kanye and Rihanna came out. I did a show with Jay-Z with, with Activision, et cetera. And then the salespeople were getting the commissions off yeah, of all of these yeah. things. And as integrated marketing, we weren't. And then I said, well, I'm bringing in all these programs. Shouldn't I get yeah. something from that? Oh, okay. Yeah, here's a bonus. Yeah. And again, it's as women, sometimes we step back and we don't realize I know. to ask. But I will say, too, I don't know that that's... I think that it could very well be harder on women. But I think people in general don't understand, like, the, the in my head, the... Um, the way that it goes is you create the value mm -hmm. and then you ask then you demand yeah. you know but you ha obviously you have to demand and ask within your means but i think that sometimes you go so far in creating all this value first that you don't even realize how valuable you really are like it seems crazy to even think to ask for a percentage of somebody's company right that sounds yeah. ridiculous yeah even though i had come up with the name etc and even in the beginning when when they first to be honest not only did I not want a, a real a, a full time job when we started at MySpace, is that I didn't know what to ask for because I I didn't have a degree in marketing yeah. and um uh, and I wanted to show my value. I was like, okay, what's the lowest I can you know seven? My my, my mom came up with a number. She's like seven fifty. I was like, okay, yeah. this could pay my expenses. Think of what they got out of you, <laughs> man. They for a got, couple of years, yeah. the first three years, yeah, Ice Cube, all these artists are in yeah. their pit bull and. You know, oh, seven fifty a week. Yeah, that's fine. That's great. But no one's gonna say anything to you until until no. you till you fight for yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what part of the challenges were. Is just I never really wanted to live in a corporate environment and to. I, I think one of the challenges of being a leader is having to delegate, because I could get shit done. Yeah. But it's hard for me to hand you something. It's hard. And trust that it will get it's done. It's very hard. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think there's a lot of people that are probably actually would be pretty good business people that just don't. Um, it's those things that I think trip people up a lot. I think mm -hmm. it's leading, delegating, yeah. asking for equity. Like mm -hmm. it's hard. Yeah. I mean, I get it. I, I and I still feel that to this day. Mm -hmm. um, but I just think if you're if you're really honing in on on being at full capacity, it's like it's just making yourself completely irreplaceable yeah and then asking for what you yeah. deserve and maybe a little bit more and i think that's where it make it all makes sense now i think this whole journey um and i think it's really important for people to know and i used to think uh that your that your career is one job yeah but it's really it's a it's or i used to think it was a destination when you yep. get here you'll be happy but it's really ongoing and it's 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 a life journey right it's like a video game you're going through all these different things yeah and i think the only reason you know that now i have these photos with you know justin bieber and his mom in my office or i'm with drake is because when i go to speak at high schools now or when i, I do my ted talk etc they won't listen right away because they're kids but if i could show a photo for two seconds it validates. Yeah, it's <laughs> so then, true. And then now my purpose is here, yep. right? And that's what MTV probably was the equivalent to you, right? It's like, yep. oh, we're doing it. We're here. We're no, So now you can listen to this advice that we're going to, to, yeah. to give. And yeah. I think that's that's where it comes full circle and, and just finding purpose. I agree. But it's so true. It's so true that you have, and even now, like, for instance, because there's a lane that I'm sort of entering into that's, you know, the... Um, 
motivational, self helpy sort of mm-hmm. thing. The problem is I by nature have a hard time saying, Look what I've done or yeah. look at what you know what I'm saying? But the more you But imagine if you had a video that could speak to it without you having to say anything. You're right. right? You're right. <laughs> Damn it, you're right. Um, <laughs> but I get it. You have to show you have to show sort of what you've done and that sometimes the obvious especially if you have photos with Justin Bieber and Drake, mm-hmm. it's like it's the easy way to get people's attention instantly and then say, okay, well, we'll listen to what she's talking well, about. Well, that's why now I use that same lift-off pictures. I haven't really changed my video profile till this day. Is And when I use it to speak, et cetera, because I want people to know that it was actually that video that spawned this idea to create it because I want everybody to understand why people spend $5 million for a 30-second commercial during the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. why artists make music videos. Again, your brand creates really great video content, so you get it. But why aren't we using this for ourselves? Mm-hmm. Why are we still creating LinkedIn pages or antiquated resumes thinking yeah. that people are interviewing you and they're going to remember you just off of a piece of paper and a, a couple of words. Yep. So it, it's, it's, it's using that system of what if everybody and has a, a video profile in, in the future and yeah. what, what it would be, you know, so we can easily say, okay, this is Gerard Adams. This is, this is out. So we're going to meet and, and it'll expedite that process. And I know that it's a little forward thinking, but it was the same reluctance when we created MySpace and I was talking to all these folks and they're like, nobody's going to have an online profile. Yeah. Like, what are you yeah, yeah, <laughs> thinking? Yeah, yeah. This is just for Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And now if you don't have one, it's actually weird. So I think in the future, everyone's going to have a video profile, whether it's on our platform or somewhere else. And that's what I'm pushing for everybody to know is like owning and archiving your success. Yep. Uh, taking your long story and making it short. Yep, yep. I like that. <laughs> Good integration. And, 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 and working as a commercial for you. And, and a lot of us don't even like talking about what we, yeah. what we, what we do. That's know? why like the couple of times. So you mentioned that I've been trying to do the uh, vlogging stuff and I've only done four of them. But mm-hmm. I literally feel like every human being should vlog once a week, mm-hmm. right? Because there's this weird thing that happens even all the time that I was in front of cameras and blah, blah, blah. It's mm-hmm. different when you're trying to make your real life entertaining or mm-hmm. show that you're doing something, right? Because yeah. here's the weird thing is, if you ask me, do I work hard? Yes. Is it interesting? Yes. Do I have an interesting job? Yes, mm-hmm. all that. But when you start to film it, you really start, you get to see it and yeah. you're like, is it really that interesting? Right. Like, what did, what did I really do today? You right, know, right, and like, right, right. Is, would any kid actually you're want like, this job? You're like, where's my producer so we can write some stuff <laughs> Yeah, like yeah. I need a script here because you're really, it yeah. really forces you to look at yourself and be like, well, I mean, would I listen to me? Right. I don't know. Or do I seem like a trusted, whatever. So, or am I that funny or am I anything? And I just think that there is this sort of unknown power in putting yourself on video, in documenting, yeah. and in seeing how you come off and being yeah. able to look at that. And for reteaching this generation, because I think it's gone through so many iterations and different apps and phases, is like, remembering, I think at least for our generation and the MySpace generation, we created it for a purpose and it was a career purpose. You created your profile for drama beats. Chanel created a profile Mm -hmm. to be a rapper. Mm -hmm. Other friends are photographers, they're filmmakers, they're dancers, etc. This was a gener, there's a MySpace generation, the Katy Perry's, Drake's, etc. Where we all grew from this for our careers. Nowadays, people, the kids think that Social media is to send each other boobs on Snapchat. Uh-huh. And I think we have to reteach that as saying, hey, you can actually utilize this for your career yeah. and not just Instagram models, but in every asset, whatever you want to do, if it's utilized properly, it can actually be a, a career turning point yeah. for you. Yeah. Do you like the stuff that Gary Vee talks about? I do. Because I think he does a pretty good job at like teaching you how to teaching younger people especially how to make a career of it. Yeah, you know? and I love his honesty. I was at the World Summit and he said, the, the challenge with today is everybody made this word entrepreneur like it's the coolest I thing ever. I hate ever. the word now so much. <laughs> I'm so sick of it. I know. And like it's a year hard. ago I loved it. Right? And now I'm like, gosh, enough. <laughs> because we know what it really takes. Yeah. And it's not glitz and glamour. It's not, you know. Yeah. It's like how model was, right? Yeah. Like when model was on like your Instagram profile, it's yeah. like, okay, you're a model. Why? Because your friend has a really good camera. Yeah. You know, like, and that was always like the diss. Now no, entrepreneur it, is Entrepreneur like, was literally, okay, I have to pay taxes. How am I going to pay my team? Yeah. You know, we have to reach these sales quota, et cetera. And yeah, it, it, it's changed over time. But I, I, I think that's why, I think that's what my mission in life is to go through all of this. And I've, I've reconnected with some folks. Tom now... He's just an amazing photographer. That's mm-hmm. all he's really wanted to do. That's amazing. Good for him. 
MySpace Tom on all the platforms, and he just gives away trips to Hawaii. He just does random. Just a rich, happy guy. That <laughs> exactly. Just gets to take photos of shit. And the other owners are doing great things. They all own their other companies. But what I love about him is just like, no, this is the this is the road I wanted. And he did it. And he did it. Right. Like if you're an artist and you want to create a business and get rich and be an artist, he did exactly that. Right. So he's like on Instagram. His name is MySpace Tom. MySpace Tom. Tom. Yeah. yeah, he's giving away, or he just gave away another, probably his fifth trip to Hawaii this. Past for shits and giggles or like what's the stipulation yeah he just because he's a photographer and he, and he has a, two homes in hawaii and he really loves it there and he's going to start trying to you know doing them throughout he did one to iceland as well I and does he get go and to... like take pictures or you get to go you get to he go likes the place because he likes the place oh, man. so we'll be doing It'd be that it'd be so fun right? to be that rich <laughs> You know, oh, you're like, giving hey, away twenty five thousand dollars to folks. I know, folks, but that's right? not like, hey, I just went out to Hawaii. It's a great place. Who wants to go? Yeah, you gotta come with us to the Philippines next time. I, if I would go on that trip, that yeah. trip you guys went on, it was, it couldn't. I was crying the whole time. Oh, it seems away. so cool. <laughs> um, did you? Did my Divio sell? Yes. So, is that number public? Yes, yeah, seven point four million. That's amazing. Isn't that huge? I mean, isn't that like for for a for a DJ <laughs> that didn't understand all of this? Yes, for sure. and that didn't yeah. even want to ask for equity, and that didn't want, <laughs> didn't think she deserved it, and like you but built and sold pre- a company. Predicting predicting that future though, and understanding how it works, it, it took it took time to understand yeah. you know how, how that actually works. Yeah. But did you have a moment similar to what we were just talking about with my gifts that you brought me? Like, did you have a moment where you thought like, holy crap, like the the DJ girl? from the lunchroom just sold a business for $7.4 million. Yeah, when I go back, like I went to go speak at Walnut High School as a first career day. That's when it, it kind of hits yeah. home. Because you see full circle. You, you see full circle and I walk the lunchroom where I'd play the music. Like, wow, this is crazy. This is you, you, it, in the same deal when you probably go to Akron. It's the same when I go back to Walnut. And it just remembering having those dreams. The only reason why I'm excited is because you can you you're living proof to, as well that dreams can come true. So you can now tell people, it's okay. Yeah. Like you don't have to do political science if that's yeah. not the deal. So true. I mean, it pisses off a lot of parents in that way. But a lot of people that I know now that are my age, they're in these jobs that they hate. They might be making a lot of money, but they're not doing what they that they love. Yeah. And I don't think it's not even the number of, of 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 the sale. It's just pursuing the passion and I always wanted to get paid to do what I loved yeah I always wanted to get paid just to be Rosalind yeah and some people don't know what I do some things I get paid for some things I don't get paid for mm-hmm. I spoke at a camp last week but I never wanted that it's like yeah. that that's the what my goal was is to live life but that's the goal I think is that I think I don't know if this is going to make sense but I think the goal is to be able to be yourself at all times but also to be financially comfortable mm-hmm. and to have both things come true and now yeah. you're at a place where you can do things just because you like to do them and you don't have to do things for the money and you can't and that's like that's it that's the dream right and to never get so far off from who you are as a person to try to make the money right. that you even lose who Rosalind even was mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying and now one day oh now you're rich but you lost everything that you loved, right? The music, the blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I think the ability to do it in a way that stays true to you and now be able to, I'm guessing, live your life in a way where it's all up to you what you do every day for the most part, I would think. Yeah, I, I'm still at the company. So yeah. Engage BDR, they're one of the largest video ad networks. They're the ones that purchased us. Yep. So I'm still you know, head of the company in that sense. And we, I get to pick and choose. We produce a music TV show every week yep. on Mixed TV. So a lot of the artists you feature as well, like we did They or Anderson Pack and Russ, and now I'm the host of that show. So yeah. close to 20 years later when they told me I was too short for TV. <laughs> yeah, look at that. I created my you own created show. created your own show. <laughs> by using the video profile to talk to the, the to the TV network and showing them. That all makes sense. And yeah. that, you know, we don't really get anything from it except for just pursuing that passion. It's, it's, it's my equivalent of being a VJ and, and, and being a DJ again and, and yeah. getting to experience that music industry side. Oh, that's so cool. Um, what's next? So what's next? Our company, we launched another company called IconicReach.com. Okay. So we connect brands and yep. influencers as well. Yep. So now the, the deals, a lot of these brands, they don't know who they should reach out to. They're, they have to create these long databases yeah. of folks. We so could probably use that. Yeah. And they're they're connecting to uh, just like the top 1% and trying to reach out to yeah. Leanne V. And, and say, but, hey, how much? 
yeah. She's like, what? Talk yeah. to my dad. He could do, you know. <laughs> but uh, we work with mostly micro influencers as well. So people from ten to to five hundred thousand. Yeah. They're they're heavily attracted by brands as well because they want to have a wider reach yeah. as opposed to paying a large number just for one. Yeah, and um, I think that's the folks. new person. I think that's the new ball game, right? Is more, uh, more people with less followers as opposed to just going to the big dog. Yeah, it's it's really about, and that's why I think again we made the mistake with MySpace because we were just pushing the more friends and more friends, and then bots came and people try to just yep. uh, game the system. But now it's really about the engagement. So we yep. can actually see, you know, how many likes are you getting? How many videos, how many video plays are you getting? Yep. You might have 5 million followers, but if you're only 1% yeah. of your following is liking it's any of your valuable. stuff, it's not valuable yeah. at all. So, we, yeah, we, we launched um, Iconic Reach. Uh, again, we do the TV show on Mixed TV, 15 Million Homes, DirecTV, and Time Warner. Yep. Uh, that's more of a passion project. And now I'm working on... A part of my story that I forgot to mention is, is just we created a, a clothing line called Little Brown Girl Clothing. Uh -huh. uh, it, was, it was during my college phases, and I didn't own it again, but I lived and breathed the brand. I wore it everywhere. Uh -huh. We actually got so big that we got a cease and desist from Bloomingdale's because the logo was like uh -huh. a direct copy uh, off of it. Good. I'm like, I don't know. You can't copy Little Brown Yo, Bag and just mean? put it on a shirt. Yeah. It says girl. Yeah, come on. <laughs> uh, but now I'm uh, creating a clothing line again for kind of the 18 and younger 18 and younger generation for girls because yeah. when you walk into a target or you walk into these stores yeah. their shirts will say pretty yeah. or they'll you know they'll be pink but there's no message behind them yeah. so eat play love or my mom's a dj just these kind of yeah. inspirational so when they see each other they can already just you you already know because you're in clothing but you connect people mm -hmm. you create a community just from that and i think that's missing uh in at least for the the youth girls because yep. is that message and that's another passion project as well. look at you the little girl who didn't want to be a businesswoman is now like a mogul. little boy oh yeah the little boy <laughs> the little boy who just wanted to be a basketball player <laughs> exactly. turned into a woman a mogul. i love my i love my ex-boyfriend that told me why can't you just do girl things yeah <laughs> Created... And were you like, what do you, why would I? Yeah, and, and Gwen Stefani just came out with that song, uh, Just a Girl. I, re I actually created a whole documentary on the four elements of hip hop and uh, b-boying, DJing, graph, emceeing, just off of that one statement. Uh -huh. <laughs> I get it now. He just didn't want his girlfriend surrounded by dudes all night. But that's the reason why yeah, I never right. took actual lessons. Like I taught myself how to play with vinyl but he never liked me going to a guy's house to like learn how to that's mix. That's true. That's the worst nightmare. You know, I'd be like, go do your hair. Stop it. Come home that's what and I'm saying. learn like, makeup stuff. Nails? Yeah. Yeah. Damn it. Um, okay. Here's the big one that I really like. Uh, if you could speak to little Rosalind. Yeah. Still little. Yeah. I would say little Rosalind who's sure as heck that she's a dude. And she's probably in, uh, she's introverted and she's in middle school. Yeah. And um, she's kind of having a hard time fitting in or really connecting with people or whatever it is. Yeah. Now, this whole journey that you went on, everything you've accomplished, where yeah. you are today sitting here, what would you tell little Roslyn to like make life a little easier? I, the quote that I always use is from Martin Luther King, you don't have to see the entire staircase, mm -hmm. just take the first step. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of the times we get distant from being passionate about our careers is because we feel like we have to fit this mold. Mm -hmm. And so if in middle school I could say, you know, th this could actually be a career if you focus on this. It might not necessarily be the DJ. It might be not be on radio, but you'll just stick to what you're passionate about, what you love, and learn the businesses to what you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. It could lead to something. But don't be so stuck up on the journey and don't think it's one destination. So when MTV turns you down or whenever anything happens, you won't get so disappointed in those because you know it's just a part of the journey. Yep. And the staircase will reveal itself as you take each step and then you look back and then you'll see the staircase and then you can say, hey, come up the staircase because yep. you've already gone up the staircase and a lot more people can go up that same staircase. Yeah, so. that's huge. Um, okay, last thing. Do you have any grand... Um, once again, the way I always word it, you've probably heard it in some mm -hmm. of the podcasts, is sort of when you're just a wrinkly old lady mm -hmm. and you know, you're 85 years old and you're sitting there with your family and whatever, and you look back on sort of your legacy or what you left behind mm -hmm. or what that, do you ever think about that? And if you do, 
what does that look like to you? Right, and I and I was listening to Tom's podcast, and he made me rethink this whole thing because he's like, "Do you want to affect one person or a million people, yeah. and nobody knows?" Yeah, right? he got us. He got us with that. One. But I think I'm in the middle. Yeah. I think that I do want to make an impact on the people's lives that are immediate family and the people that I touch that I meet in person. Mm -hmm. And I also want to. I, I release free eBooks and I release free like social marketing video one on ones on YouTube teaching a lot of these things because I want people to, to learn mm -hmm. as as well. But when I look back, I want to see, it might be age 37 when I went to Tony Robbins again, that pivotal point where it, and it stopped being a chase for significance yeah. and it, turn, it, it turned to growth and contribution. And then actually, like all of that didn't even matter anymore. It's just about how many people can I touch? Yep. How, when, I, when I spoke at the camera, like how many kids can I talk to? Mm -hmm. you know, how many lives can be affected? And how many, you feel the same way. Like when you get one listen on that podcast, whether oh, it's yeah. SoundCloud or iTunes, you're just like, I, yeah. they listen to yeah. this. Because yeah. this was gold, whatever yeah. was in this. And I just hope somebody else heard it. Yep. And so I want to look back and as many people as possible were affected within that six degrees of separation with something along the lines of, of, of what I've experienced or what I've expressed, especially whether it's, um, you know, becoming a DJ, whether it's in the corporate world and, and fighting for what you want um, and need, or it's it's now it's giving back. And how do we spread the message to our younger generation in a way that they understand? Yeah. It might just be through little B-girl clothing and seeing, you know, a female DJ on a shirt rather than uh, the word pretty. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and getting to understand that, but... Yeah, I still want to be kicking. Did you see the 85 year old um, weightlifting woman? No. She just won a, a championship. Send it to me. I will. I try oh, to man. go I to hope one I'm of like the. That. <laughs> exactly. I hope I'm like that when I'm old. You know, like just some old, tanned, like weird, active you man. Will you will know? be. You're going to be in Miami. Well, I, I try hope. to come to one of your young and reckless things because Chief knew that I was a dancer. Yeah. But I was like the break dancer, like cipher in the in, do you like, still do it ever? circle. I want to actually. I should oh, bring out the man. videos. So he said, "We're having this dance thing at Millennium." Or I forgot where you guys yeah, had yeah, it. In the Valley. It was. I think it may be Millennium in the Valley. Yeah. Yeah. I went there. But mind you, choreography is a lot different from B girling. So yeah. after three seconds, I was like, "Chief, this is not what we did. You set me up for failure oh, on this that's one." <laughs> But I want to come and work out with you and the young please, and reckless please. girls. Please, you are welcome to every single thing that I do. I'll make sure that Chief um, keeps you in the loop on everything. We're trying to do more girls stuff because the lo that line is very important to us, and yeah. like it's just about like I don't know. I think a huge part of it for the girls marketing is just showing that it is actually a priority to us, yeah. and that we're working with the right girls and doing stuff the right way. So it's hard because we kind of came up as a men's brand, and when you try to add women's to it it makes it a really difficult yeah. thing we'll bring Just, some of those girls into this podcast i know that they're they're yeah. they're 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 two separate entities but i think uh in your journey what what, what i see is that your your brand has evolved and mm -hmm. this is actually the evolution of young and reckless it is so everybody that sat in this chair you know whether it's gerard etc we're all young and reckless at one time because we didn't know what we were doing but you're dead on to literally <laughs> this weekend right. this weekend i made a graph of how my entire life sort of my business life um yeah. works together yeah and so the part that this applies to is my job on this earth is to uh, expose people to what is possible yeah. right here success is possible a happier life is possible this is all possible i'm going to show you and tell you why and you can also watch me try to do it exactly so on this side is my vlogs of me trying to do it. Mm -hmm. um, Young and Reckless's job is to highlight the people that are going through it mm -hmm. and say, you guys are going to make it your next whatever. Mm -hmm. The podcast job is to talk to the people that were it mm -hmm. and made it and to hear from them. So you're not just hearing from me all day saying, go do it, be better, be awesome. Mm -hmm. You're hearing from a new person every week that says, look, I was you mm -hmm. and and I did it, yeah. and here's how I did it, and get to know me, and here's my advice. And I think if I can fuel all of those things equally, yeah. I'll have this little universe that'll be very- And you have, you've already connected, even even the people that have been on the podcast, I think with each other, we feel a sort of camaraderie because we've sat through this therapist chair. Yeah. Uh, but I, I want, I, I challenge the listeners to do that. I want to know what's the craziest story, or what's the most, inspiration that you've gotten from one of these podcasts and how yeah. you've made it an actionable actionable item yep. and let's like let's 
I'll okay. pay for it. We'll give them a, 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 a gift package. A trip to Hawaii with Tom. <laughs> a trip to Hawaii with Tom. Uh, 40%, 50% off of Young and Reckless and some that. pizza. Oh, I love it. <laughs> and a video profile. No, but to, to, to do that, to see to, to see the reaction and the things that you'll, you've created a lot of inspiration with a lot of this youth. So let's see what they're doing. Okay, so let's do that. Where do they send it to? Wait, they can either. To your, uh, what's your Instagram? Yeah, it's Rosalind C R O S L Y N N C. I'll post a photo from this. So if you post a comment, how this? Yes. Podcast... So this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna tag her Instagram in the podcast description. You'll also see it on my Instagram and all my social media. What will be tomorrow? Mm -hmm. And she will post a photo from the podcast in the comment section. Comment. Or in yours, because you either have a, one. you have one point four in yours. Yes. So either the photo <laughs> on the photo of me and her on my page, or the photo of. Her and I on. We want to hear your page. story. Tell the story. And we will give you, I'll send you a free box of a shit ton of Young and Reckless clothes. Some bundles. Some bundles. Yeah. Uh, a free pizza if you live in LA. <laughs> and and we'll create a video profile for we'll the company that you're, that you're creating. Deal. Uh, deal. I like that. Okay, last thing is tell everyone where to find you, the company. Sure. Just tell them where to go and instagram is my favorite yep. i think unless you want to talk to my mom on facebook it's <laughs> rosalind c r-o-s-l-y-n-n-c -N -N and our company is called my divio m-y-d-i-v is in victor eo.com so my discovery video at my divio.com but the last thing i wanted to, re to, to tell the story yes <laughs> was the rob story of when he spoke at our sales conference because i know he said that he hates doing those but he was amazing i can't even imagine him doing it <laughs> Was it when MySpace? It was probably 2009. And some people were like, who is this kid that's going to come talk to us? So it was like right when Robin Big started. Yeah. And and he, he pumped everybody up. I wish we had, we have to find footage. Was it motivational? It was motivational. I remember leaving. And the, it wasn't that long ago because Kelly Swag performed Dougie. Okay. Teach Me How to Dougie. Okay. That's not like. It, it's not too, too far old. where like. Drama's still wearing his jerseys. But wow, it's pretty damn close. It, it was, it was, yeah. We got to find that video. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. It's hey, an honor. Hey, thank you for doing this. This was amazing. And thank you for being such a positive. I, you blew me away. The gifts, trust me, I will take that lesson for life to be better at just showing appreciation and gifts and more thoughtful things. Thank you for being such a good role model. And thank you for, like I said, I don't have enough women on here and I need to do it more. And you came on both. and you yeah. crushed it. And so thank you for that. Oh, Liz and Leanne did great as well. But I, I think what you do for all of us, and I didn't even know it's been over a year. Yeah, just over. That's amazing. <laughs> we did it. My whole thing was I just have to start it. Oh, I wanted to it say it. We year. did it. We did it. We did it. There we it did is. it. Thanks, guys, for listening this long. Thank you.